remember uh, Welton Gannis. He's uh, uh, out of the hospital, but he's, I believe, in rehab trying to improve there. And so uh, we're thankful for the progress that he's had. But again, it's good to see you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now, if we can. Our Father, we are just uh, so grateful, Lord, for, for who you are and for your great love to us and your mercy. Uh, we thank you for the precious blood of Jesus, God, which was shed for our sin and, and the fact that you live and you live in us today and that you are our victory, you are our life, you are our hope, and, uh, and everyone that has the Son has the life. And we just pray, Father, if there's one here that doesn't know you this morning, that really has not turned their lives over to the Lord Jesus Christ, even though they may be very religious and may go to church and maybe even serve in some capacity. They just don't have that right relationship with Jesus. They've never turned from their sins and totally committed their lives into his hands. And God, we just pray that they might be born again today, that they might come to know you. And Father, we pray, Lord, that you'd have your will and way in everything that's done. We pray for our nation. We pray, God, that you'd have your way uh, and, and bring your people back to you, if in particular in these days, in revival and repentance. And Lord, that, that God, you would even bring this nation, Lord, uh, back to a, uh, a closer semblance of, of what we started out to be. And God, we, we, we're so far gone. Well, we just pray, God, for, for your mercy, for your grace on this nation in these days. And Father, we pray for these that are sick. Lord, we pray for this Bryson, God, that you would have mercy on him and on his family and you would do what's best for him. If that please you to raise him up, God, and, and to bring him and restore his health, God, we just, we just pray you'd do that. And Lord, we pray for Welton, you continue to work in his life. And, and for Melissa and others, God, we just pray your hand would be upon each and every one according to their needs. God, we pray that, that you would uh, strengthen those who are discouraged today, lift them up, and help them to see Christ and to find encouragement in him today. We thank you, Lord, for everything you're going to do here. We pray for Brother Jason. You'd help him, God, to, to uh, lead in music today and just have your will and way in all of that. We ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Brother Jason, come and live. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to see everybody here today. Just a couple of quick things. Uh, there are flyers. There, there are flyers still out there, right? I believe there's still some flyers uh, sitting out there. If you'd like to pick one of these up for the fall festival uh, and just hand them out to your friends at work or, or I don't know if we're allowed to do that at school or something along those lines. But anyway, wherever you're allowed to, please don't break any laws or anything like that. Uh, but uh, we would, uh, I'd love for you to be able to get the word out as much as possible. Share uh, the fall festival on your, on your Facebook page. Tell your friends about it. To be honest, we want this inaugural one to be the first one, uh, well, to, to be a, a really good one right off, right off the bat. Uh, so I'm, I'm super excited about that. Also, we've still got some of the car decals. Uh, they're still for sale for $3 back there. It's an easy, quick way to... Tell everyone about the church and, and the great, great things that are going on here and all the wonderful folks that I'm sure anyone on the outside would love to meet. And uh, also, yet again, the end game of all this is to share Jesus with, with, with the community. I think, I, think that's the, I think that's the big thing here at the end. Um, also, Courtney and I will be here today, uh, at, I know at, at 5 o'clock and, and probably before then. I'm, I'm assuming we'll probably be here around 3 if not earlier than that. Uh, and so if you'd like to be here to help us start the setup of the fall festival, we would love your help, absolutely. Uh, so if, if you want to come here around 3 or any time after that, uh, we, we would absolutely love your help to set up with candy, uh, games, music, things along those lines. All right, let's all stand for our fellowship. How many are glad that you have a friend in God, amen?
I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Sing it with me. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's heart. You lead us by still waters and to mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people. Remember your promise. Remember your promise, oh God. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. second verse great is your love and justice God you use the weak to lead the strong you the sin the song of your salvation and all your people sing along so Remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Your grace, your grace. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Thank you so much. Please be seated.
Let's all stand. Sing a hymn I think a lot of folks know. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege you gave Everything to God in prayer Oh, what peace we often forfeit Oh, what needless pain we bear All because we do not care God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Yeah. Find a friend so faithful Who will all our sorrows bear Jesus knows our every weakness Take it to the Lord in prayer Let's sing that last Are we weak and heavy? We're the Lord of care. Precious.
your Savior still I refuse Take me to the Lord in prayer Do thy friends despise forsake thee Take it to the Lord in prayer In his arms he'll take and shield thee find a soul that's there Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary Pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Sing that one more time with me. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. leave that off for now. I'm going to ask the, the deacons if they'll come forward. I'm going to share some scriptures and I'm going to do something a little bit different today than, than normal. And um, So we're going, we're going to do this before, but I'm going to kind of share as we do the Lord's Supper. And um, and so you just pray for me as we do this. In 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four, the Bible says, And when he had given thanks, he broke it 
and said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats, drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And so, as we come to this Lord's table this morning, I want to, to encourage you to um, examine yourself and, and, and really in, in, in the Baptist church, there's only one real major requirement that, that, uh, to partake of the Lord's Supper. And that is for you to belong to the body of Christ. That's to, to be born again, blood bought, and, and, and of course that follows that you're baptized and, and a part of the body of Christ. And uh, I, I'm just kind of changing things up this morning a little bit from what I originally had, had planned and you know, as I think about the Lord's Supper and I think about, about what the significance of this, and, and we as Baptists really don't probably do this often enough as Jesus told us to do. We celebrate it about once a quarter. But it, it really is significant. And uh, when we think about it, we, we, we know that the elements are, are just that. They're symbols of the body and the blood of Christ. Not They're not changed by any magical power like some some may believe but but we understand behind that symbolism is great power and uh, I, I was reading some devotions this week uh, by Oswald Chambers and it reminded me that that you know all the things that we do in our faith in our religion pray, Repent, believe, um, obey, be blessed, grow in Christ. All of them are contingent upon one thing. And that is the fact that Jesus came. And Jesus died. And Jesus rose again. That we might enjoy everlasting life, that we may know God and have the forgiveness of sin and be able to pray to God and, and receive answers and be able to share Jesus with our family and know that they too can be saved. Everything contingent upon what Jesus did on that cross when Jesus died for our sins. And so as I share my story with you once again, for some of you who have not heard it, I want you to think about, the, that's, that's the point of this. And, and as a young man, when I was just uh, six years old, or five years old, I guess, I remember going to church one Sunday morning, and I remember the preacher preaching, and I always remember, and it seemed that morning he preached on hell, I cannot tell you for certain that he did. But I do know this, that as I sat back there in that pew, I knew that I was a sinner, and that I was lost, and if, and if I died that day, I was going to hell. As a young five-year-old boy, I understood something about that. And I went down to the, man, I, they'd play just as I am in those days, every Sunday it seemed like. And, and, and when they started singing that song, I, I would get under conviction and I would not, I, I wanted to go, I wanted to go so bad, and many Sundays I would not go. And then finally one Sunday I went down and unfortunately, the pastor just kind of brushed me off. He, I didn't answer his questions the way he wanted. And that was the last time he talked with me. And I, to this day, I feel like that pastor should have pursued that, that God was dealing with me. 
he should have pursued that, but he didn't. And, uh, and so it was many years later at a James Robson's crusade that I, I went down and made a profession of faith and may have truly been saved then. But I nailed it down when I was 17 years old, and, uh, or 16 to 17, that area of my life. And, and by that time, I was, I was a pretty wicked guy, and I'm, I'm kind of cutting this short a little bit. But some severe things happened in my life. My parents had been divorced. I had older brothers, and I got involved in things. They kind of got me involved in things as a young boy, kind of bringing me into the fold, so to speak, so I wouldn't rat them out. And I was drinking and smoking dope and different things like that as a very young age. And uh, at 15 years old, uh, I was working in a store, and I was stealing from that store, and uh, kind of doing what helped me to take care of the things that I was doing. And, and uh, I remember many nights, my, my stepmother was a very godly woman, and she prayed for me. I remember many, many nights laying in that bed in a stupor, actually, Praying, God, don't let me die and go to hell. Because I knew that I deserved to go to hell if I died in my sin. And it wasn't but a, after I, I actually lost my job there, the only job I've ever lost in my life, and it was due to, to this drug influence in my life, and then about a month later, I got put in jail for public drunkenness at, a foot, at Hannah Westside football game, which uh, West, my team won the other night, by the way. And uh, they don't win much, but they did the other night. And so it was that next morning when I woke up at my, dad's, my stepdad's house, who was a cop, and my mother's house where I did not live, that I realized, so I, the night was really partially blacked out for me. Um, you need God to do something in your life. Or, or you're, 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 you're heading truly down that road of destruction. Look what you are. God was dealing with me. And I, I, I saw myself, I think, probably for the first time the way God saw me. And, uh, and I went to church that Sunday morning for the first time in many, many years. And I'd, I'd love to say, hey, I went down that day and everything was right, but it, it was really about a year, a process of a year, where I started going to a little church with my stepmother, and God was dealing with me, and one night in my room, I, I trusted Christ, and, and, and I, uh, I remember reading a book by Watchman Nee, called The Normal Christian Life, and he was talking about the Holy Spirit. And he said, if you truly believe in Christ, the Holy Spirit is in you. He lives in you. And he says, you don't need to ask for him. You don't need to beg for him. To... He says, you just need to thank God that, that he's in you. And I did, and uh, as I've shared before, heaven came down, and glory filled my soul. And that was the day that I know, that I know, that I know that Jesus cleansed me and that the Holy Spirit lives in me, and he's my Lord, and he's my Savior, and I've, I've never doubted that since then. I'm not going to say I haven't had moments, but I've not really ever really doubted that Jesus saved me. But it all comes back. It wasn't that day. That day was a great, great day. But it wasn't that day. It was that day that made that possible. And, and I, I'd like to say, too, that I did repent. I went and gave, at that, uh, about two years later, I went back to that store owner and I gave him 600 and something dollars. He had no idea I'd even taken it. But God changed my heart. God moved in. He changed me. He made me a different person. I, I, I'm not a taker anymore. I'm a giver by the grace of God. And... Uh, I want to tell you that, that, that when, when Jesus moves in, it's not about me anymore. It's not about me. 
It's not about you. It's about him. Isn't it? It's really about what honors him. And that's where our heart needs to be. That's where our lives need to be. We need to examine ourselves. And say, you know, what, what is really the priority of my life? Am I truly seeking first the kingdom of God? And letting all these other things be added? Or am I seeking all these things and giving God the leftovers? I believe that's where most of us are, brothers and sisters. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just going to be honest. I think God's way down there on the back burner somewhere. And if we got a little bit of time, we'll give a little bit of it to Jesus. Well, I want to tell you, he don't want your pennies. He don't want your scraps, and he don't want your leftovers. He wants your heart, life, and soul. And you may be laughed at, and you may be, hey, hey, you know, this, these people, they're just too extreme, they're too radical, they're too fanatical. Well, that's good. If that's what they think about you, then that is a good testimony. We need more of that. We need people that are sold out to Jesus in this church. And in and, and my message this morning that, that I intended to preach, I, I want to say there, there's, there's, we're no stronger in this church. This body will never be any stronger than the strongest members of the body. That includes me. That includes you. It's just like a muscle in the body. You know what the strongest muscle in the body is? You can be surprised. But it's actually the, the jaw. But then, of course, you know, our, our, our leg muscles are strong. There's many, many strong parts of our body. And, and, and without those strong parts of our body, we cannot function and do the things that we need to do as a body. And so I just want to ask you, what is your commitment to Jesus? I believe your commitment to Jesus is reflected in your commitment to his house and to his body. I do believe that. I think there's a great separation today in people's minds. But I believe when you look in the word of God, it says that they were together, breaking bread, prayers. They were together, breaking bread, in prayers and sharing the gospel. They were together. I didn't prepare this message, folks. This is just what's on my heart. This is just where God has got me. I'm, I'm broken. I am broken. I'm broken for our nation. I'm broken for Mount Tabor. I'm broken for myself. And I'm broken for the lack of interest in the things of God in the society and in, even in the body of Christ today. I'm just broken. I, I, I've called out to God. I've begged God, and I don't know what else to do. I, all I say is, please pray for me. You don't know how many times I quit this job. I'm going to let that sink in a little bit. God, only God's kept me here, and only God keeps me doing what I do. It is not about the money, believe me. I can make a living. I've been making a living all my life. God can take care of me. But God has me here for a purpose. I don't want to miss it. But I don't want you to miss it either. So examine yourself today. I know you had not went out and committed adultery or stolen anything from anybody this week. I trust you haven't. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but where is your heart for God today? Where is your love for the Word today? Where is your love for the prayer and fellowship? We're to a point in our society, we were talking about this in Sunday school, that, that we love everything, but we're bored with church and with God and the Word and prayer and, and the things that are important in life. And that's the truth. We're bored with it. 
And if we're bored with it, that means that, that our love for him is just not very intense, is it? If you're bored with your wife, can you really say you really are devoted and love her? If you're, devo if you're bored with your husband, can you really say you're devoted to that person and love them in a strong, passionate way? And so I, I'm just calling you today. I want you to bow your heads before we take of this Lord's Supper. The good news is Jesus did shed his blood. And the Bible says, the Bible says that if we confess our sins, that means if we agree with God, we get on his side. Say, I'm on the Lord's side and I agree with that my sin is bad, my sin is ugly, my heart is dark, I, I am apathetic, I am uh, lazy, I am not fired up for God, then just tell him. Just tell him right now that that's where you are, that you need him to come in and to make a move in your heart and life, to cleanse you, first of all, and to forgive you for that lack of hunger, for that lack of desire, for that, that lack of, of, of a, a desire to do what God would have you to do and, and, and the fact that you're just hungry for everything else and letting that fill your life instead of God. Just talk to God right now in your seat. Just be honest with God. The Bible says that he's looking for a person whose spirit there is no guile, there is no deceit, that you are able to be transparent and open. He knows about it anyway. So don't sit there and try to defend yourself before God and say, well, God, I'm the best person in here. If everybody could be like me, because you'll be like that Pharisee who walks away unforgiven. But I want to tell you, he will cleanse you. The precious blood of Jesus will cleanse you from every sin. So this is your moment. This is your time. To turn everything over to God. Don't make a big commitment. I'm going to do better, Jesus, and all this stuff because you're, going, you're just lying. What you need to do is turn to say, Lord, I, I, I'm turning it all over to you. And I'm just asking you to take over and allow me and enable me to, to go forward and to do what I know that I ought to do. That means a commitment to his word, a commitment to prayer. Commitment to share Christ with those at work and in your family. Commitment to God's house. Make that commitment today. Surrender to Him and to what He would have you to do. Our Father, we, we thank You and we praise You, Lord, that your word is true that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. You really do renew us day by day. And you give us hope that God, even as, 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 as sorry as we might be at times, that God, you, you saved us by your blood. You, you loved us enough that you sent your only son, that you, you uh, chose us from the foundations of the earth to be conformed to his image and to his likeness. And you are working in us. And we may be sinners, but we're truly sinners saved by grace, and we are saints, and we belong to you. We're your children. And God, we just pray, oh God, that even right now, Lord, that God, you would cleanse us and you'd renew that spirit of righteousness, 
Renew that zeal and that desire. Kindle that love that, that is a low ember in our lives. And help us to do the things we know we need to do, to do the first works. That we might not be bored with church and bored with you, but enjoy your presence. Enjoy your power. And God, just have your will and way in every heart and life today as we partake of this Lord's Supper. We ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Brother Jason, could you play something softly on the guitar?
you look at your wafer and you contemplate that night, think about the fact that God came out of heaven. And they called him Jesus. He said, His name shall be called Jesus because he shall save his people from their sin. And he said, Lo, you have prepared a body for me. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but you have prepared a body for me. Did you? Have you ever really contemplated that God doesn't have a body? God is a spirit. God gave Jesus a body. And the main reason he gave him a body was that body was going to go to the cross. That body was going to die. That body was going to shed blood. It was going to suffer. It was going to pay the price for our sin. He said, this is my body, broken for you, take and eat. I'm going to ask Brother Billy if you'll pray for us before we take partake of the, the juice. Son, just like Troy said, to take on a body, Lord, to, to, to die for us and to give us to realize how unworthy we are, Lord. That, but it's just because of your graciousness and your love to, and your hope for us, Lord, that, that's why you want us to have a life. That's why you sent your Son. And just thank you for that, Lord, and just thank you for that hope that you give us. And in Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
I'll ask Jason to come forward and to lead us in a cappella. The chorus, nothing but the blood. Wait for Cody to get the words on the screen. Let's all sing. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain and cleansed by His blood. Joined hairs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. 